Hello friends, my name is Theo and today in this exciting Mr. Media tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at one of the fundamental great features in DaVinci Resolve, which is power windows. And it is what first jumped out to me whenever I saw Resolve as like, oh uh, shoot. So here we have this shot. I just threw a quick little power grade on, so you see four, so shameless plug, van time from the Carnival Power Grades pack, you want to see what's going on there, this is what's going on there. Cool, but that's not important because we are just using power windows today. So what is a power window? It's basically a way to section off part of your grade. So if we add a new node here and go over to the power window section, you can see we have all these different things. So this section here is where you choose what shape you want your window to be. And then over here is where you sort of change the parameters of that window. So you see we have a linear, circle, polygon, curve, and gradient. So we'll just add a quick circle one to begin with and start experimenting. So here we have this. This wireframe will not end up in your actual render, so don't worry about that. And you can see, look at that, we made a crazy grade. And without the circle, that's what it would look like. So these handles here, on the corners scale, on the sides scale just on one axis, and then these little pinky red dots change the softness, so you can see what that does there. And right now, with how this is, we are only affecting the inside of the power window. If we want to affect the outside, just hit that guy. And if we want to cut out a section, and just add another window there and choose this mat option. You can cut out the middle right there. So if you ever need something like that, that's how you do it. So you can see we have our linear power window, which you can adjust the points on just like that, scale it out, change the softness per vertex. Then we have our polygon, which we have these four corners here, but you can also just click any part of the line and add another point. So great for garbage mats and stuff like that real fast. You can see this doesn't have any of the little softening handles, but if you go down to our softness section here, you can still soften, but it's not quite as fine control, but that's just fine. So turning that off, now the most precise one is our power curve, and this is just like a Bezier spline because it is a Bezier spline. You can see there we have that. You can move any point you want. You can click add another point, and then you can adjust the feathering by once again down here, and this time you will get the little controls. And these are again per vertex, so if you need really soft there, really hard there, you can add the outside ones too, do the same thing. And then finally we have the gradient, which is just like it sounds. So on the arrow side, that's where it falls off, and on the side opposite from the arrow is where 100% of the correction is happening. So this is really great, especially for like sky stuff. So if you wanted to make that, you know, a red sky, it's already a pretty red sky, but you know, you can just make it even more red. So that's pretty cool. Or if you wanted to, you know, add some color contrast, this window is a lot of fun to play with. You can always just, you know, sort of push it there-ish and even out your shot some, so whatever you want. Now to see some more excellent features of these, I'm just gonna hop right back to the circle window. You can add more circle windows if you want to just by clicking up there and linear and all sorts of stuff. So you can really fill this guy up to delete them. You just select it, hit delete and delete. If you have a bunch of windows, you can rename them just by double clicking there and typing cool window and then deleting them again. So we don't need that. So with this window, let's add a vignette to the scene. So we will darken it down. You see this is in the middle, but we don't want it in the middle. We want it in the side. So just like before, hit this little button. Nice. Look at that. So we have that there and we can see our subject moves around just a little bit. So we want this vignette to follow him. So sort of level one of doing this is dragging it to him, going to corrector two, which is where our corrector is, dropping this down, going to circle window, enabling keyframing, give it a little nudge, it will add a keyframe, going to the end, dragging the window there, going to the middle, making sure it stays where it's supposed to be. You can make that as precise or as not precise as you want. But now you can see that follows our subject, which is really great. But say you're like me and you're too lazy to do that. Well, we'll just go ahead and delete these keyframes. Then we will go over to our tracker tab. And in here, you can see we have all these great controls. I'm not gonna go too in depth on the tracker because that's its own tutorial but I'm just gonna turn off the 3D option because we don't really need that for this shot. I'll leave everything else enabled. And the other thing I'll do is I will make this guy a lot smaller just cause that'll make the track easier and more precise. So say I wanna track the head and track forward and pro tip about using the tracker. You can see that was pretty quick already. It isn't super exact, but we don't need to be super exact cause there's this turnaround. 
But if you want to track even faster, I'll go ahead and reset that. You can disable all your other nodes. So there's what it looks like without the power grade, but you can see it tracks even faster. So perfect. Now just re-enable this node, make it all bright and stuff. And now since we have this guy tracked, we can edit it however we want to and it will stay relative to the tracking data. So we can make it bigger and softer and maybe even move it a little bit. And now, just like that, we have a lovely little track. No one can ever tell that we did anything different. Another quick bonus tip, you can hit Alt-O to create an outside node and that will be the inverse of what is in this. So if we look at our nodes here, this is the one we were working on and it is everything outside of the circle. And then this is our outside node, which is everything inside of that circle, which is sort of backwards because we flipped the image. But it's whatever is not what you were working on before. So we could add some color contrast by making this guy go, I don't know, we'll say pink. This guy going more yellowy. And then, you know, we probably don't want to do that, but it's something you can do. But that is sort of the basics of how Power Windows work, maybe even a little bit more than the basics. With this tutorial, you should be able to feel pretty confident going and playing around with them, making stuff happen, which is always good because these are great, especially when you combine them with the tracker and then with keys later on. Oh man, it's good stuff. And getting really good at using these windows can help you sort of fudge and increase the dynamic range of your scenes and really make stuff stand out and just make your stuff look better than everyone else's, which is what you want at the end of the day, I assume. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you liked it, give it a like. If you didn't, give it a dislike. No matter what, leave your feelings down in the comments below. If you want to see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe to the Meester Media YouTube channel. If you want even more goodness, be sure to check out MeesterMedia.com slash products, where we have the House Let's Pack. We have the Carnival Power Grays Pack, which you saw today, which is great. Once again, let's just look at how. So you can see we're using qualifiers in here, which is one of the great things about power grades that you can't do with LUTs. So that's why power grades are cool. Also, we have some sweet stock footage stuff, light leaks and lens junk, which is like optical elements of crazy craziness. And if none of those are your bag, we also have a free texture pack. If you're just like a textury type of dude or girl, girls can be dudes. Once again, I've been Theo with Meester Media. I hope you have a great day and I will see you next time. Bye. <laughs>